Hi, my name's Andrew Finn McGill, and I'm a violinist and fiddler from Asheville, North Carolina, which is where I am right now, as a matter of fact. And I want to welcome you and thank you for joining me for this virtual concert from Washington, D.C., Alabama, Brazil. It's a virtual concert, so theoretically you could be anywhere. Wherever you are, you're most welcome. And thanks for letting me indulge you with some of this music that I'm so passionate about. Before I go any further, I want to just thank Brian McCann, because without Brian, this would have not been possible. So Brian has been gracious enough to invite me into his class a few times over the last few years and actually come in and be with other people in the same room without masks on. It's kind of wild to say nowadays, but um, they were wonderful experiences. I have a few different Brazilian projects, and we performed for the students, and we've also performed for the Friday concert series, which this is a part of, albeit in digital virtual form. At any rate, I'm most grateful, so thank you, Brian, and everyone at Georgetown who made this possible. Just as a bit of a primer of what you're going to see, there's going to be two versions of me. So there's the presenter version of me, obviously, that's this version, and then there's going to be the musician version of me, and I'll be cutting back and forth between the two of us, or two of me. I'm not sure what to say in that situation. Um, it just seemed more sense editing-wise. It just seems like it make more sense editing-wise. So there you go. Um, and let's just start the program. So the first set of music I'm going to play is a set of Bossa Nova. And I thought I would start with Bossa Nova because this was my introduction to Brazilian music itself, I think, like for a lot of Americans. So when I was a teenager, I got really into jazz and then soon discovered that I couldn't call myself a jazz player if I didn't know some bossa nova. And it's interesting because here we think of bossa nova as this Brazilian, sometimes even Latin thing, this other thing. And in Brazil, when I first got down to Brazil, lo and behold, there bossa nova is this more jazz thing. Uh, so it's interesting. There are a lot of commonalities, but I thought I would start with three of the classics of the bossa nova repertoire. And they were all written by the father of bossa nova himself, Antonio Carlos Jobim also known as Tom Jobim, Tom. Uh, they named an airport after him in Rio de Janeiro, so he's a big deal. And he wrote the music to these, but there are lyrics, and the lyrics were written by, I suppose, the other father of Bossa Nova, Vinicius de Moraes. So Vinicius de Moraes was the lyricist, one of the greatest lyricists in Brazilian history, and he wrote lyrics to all these Bossa Novas and so many more. So the tunes are Triste, Wave, and literally the most recorded tune in musical history, The Girl from Ipanema. I hope you enjoy these. Thank you. 
I'm going to play you two pieces of music which come from the Brazilian guitar repertoire, and since I first discovered Brazilian music, I've always been attracted to the guitar. I just think it's such a beautiful, virtuosic, lush instrument wherever it exists in Brazilian music, be it bossa nova, samba, choro, you name it. And I couldn't resist but arrange these two melodies for the violin, which is a bit ambitious. I'll just apologize to the guitarists watching right now. Because in Brazil, oftentimes, the seven-string guitar is the default guitar. And so to reduce these lush seven-string melodies and chords to four strings, I did my best, is all I'm going to say. Uh, so I chose two mashishis, and a mashishi is a rhythm. And it was also something of a musical genre in the, ter in the early 20th century. So it was a precursor to samba, and it was actually one of the earliest forms of shoru. Much of the early shorter was written in the mashishi rhythm. And the two mashishis I'm going to play, the first one is called Grauna, and it was written by João Pernambuco. And the second one is called Tempo de Criança, by Guilhermando Reis. And both of these are kind of pearls in the guitar repertoire that you can't not learn if you're studying Brazilian music. Just a pro tip if there's any Brazilian guitar students out there. Anyway, I hope you enjoy these two tunes.
Okay, this next piece of music I first discovered living in Brazil in 2014. I moved to Brazil in 2014 uh, for many reasons, the biggest of which was a woman. I ended up marrying her, and now we live here in North Carolina. But while I was in Brazil, I really became passionate about Brazilian choro music, which is an instrumental genre. And I had a lot of tune books, still have them, in fact. And one day I came across this tune with a French title. Uh, so the name is L'Indifference, Indifference. And I had never come across a Brazilian tune with a French title. And a friend told me later that Brazilian music, so the tune is actually French, and that Brazilian music at least Brazilian choro, is based on French musette music, which made a lot more sense because the form of the music is very similar. There's three parts in both genres. The modulations tend to be similarly predictable between both forms of music. So I'm going to play this tune probably more in a, well, definitely more in a French style than a Brazilian one. And I'm going to start the tune by doing a little intro in a French gypsy jazz style. Uh, since that's a kind of music that I so associate with France and was was forged in France, Gypsy Jazz, actually, uh, by that band that I mentioned at the beginning, the Hot Club de France with Stefan Grappelli and Django Reinhardt. So I'm going to do my best to channel Stefan Grappelli here, uh, the 14-year-old version of me practicing all those licks in my basement, and then go into L'Indifference. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, if you're watching this, congratulations, you've made it to the end. <laughs> and I applaud you for your attention in this culture of two, three second attention spans. And thank you for sticking it with me to the end. I hope you've enjoyed at least some of the music, hopefully all of the music that you've heard in the program. I'm gonna close things out with a set of sambas. And samba is an amazing style of music. When I first went to Brazil in 2007, I went to the northeast of Brazil, a city called Salvador, and I went to a concert with three of the who's who of the contemporary samba singers. And of course, I didn't know who these people were. Uh, another gringo convinced me to go, and what an amazing experience. I soon learned that in Brazil, you don't go to hear your favorite, when you go to a concert, you don't go to hear your favorite singers sing your favorite songs. It's kind of like the world's best karaoke. You go to outsing your favorite singers singing your favorite songs. And it was amazing. There were thousands of people in the audience. Each one of them was singing every song word for word, which is saying something because there were three different artists. So that's three different catalogs of music to memorize, but everyone knew everything. And the next three pieces I'm gonna play, none of them are by any of those artists, but that's okay, because all of these artists who wrote these pieces of music are legends in their own right. So the first legend is Palion da Viola. He wrote the first tune called Chimonero. The second tune was written by Nelson Cavaquinho. It's called Folhas Secas. Both Nelson and Paulinho are from Rio de Janeiro. And the last tune was written, it was written by Ari Barroso, who was, along with Vinícius de Moraes, another brilliant lyricist, very famous for his lyrics in Brazil. And I got this version of the tune Aquarela do Brasil from the singing of Gal Costa, another Rio de Janeiro native. So I hope you enjoy, I hope, you, I hope you've enjoyed the concert. And thank you once again to Brian and Georgetown, everyone who made this possible. Now sit back and enjoy and dance, if you feel like it, to these next three tunes. Have a great 2021. Cheers. <laughs>